Hello everyone, my name is Emily and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I just finished watching a video by a moderately sized art YouTuber named D'Angelo Wallace and he was discussing a controversy centered around a big art YouTuber which is Holly Brown. That controversy being that Holly Brown posted a work in progress piece of art. I guess it wasn't entirely definitive that it was a work in progress. And in this piece, she had directly traced uh, a still from the anime Full Metal Alchemist. D'Angelo's criticism of her was that her eventual apology video was hollow and seemed more filled with excuses than an apology. Which is a fair criticism. Holly has been known to be a little bit standoffish in terms of criticism, which is fine. You know, I think we all deal with criticism in different ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that she does not take said criticism. Now before I get into this, I'm going to be transparent. I have had one singular, just one bad experience with Holly Brown and that's pretty much it. Before anyone asks, no, she is not the YouTuber I was talking about in my other video. I have only had one bad experience with Holly and that is the extent of my experience with her, period. The experience really wasn't anything too breathtaking, it just was negative. Several years ago, I hosted a Halloween collab with several art YouTubers and we were all small. At that point, I believe I had 5,000 subscribers. Holly only had 10 or 15,000 and there were a couple other people in the collab. Two of these people were outside of the US. Because of that, we did not have enough time to send a canvas or a sheet of paper around to all of us to do a traditional collab in that sense. And I believe that's what Holly was kind of hoping for. I essentially just partnered everybody up with someone randomly. I drew literal you know, tickets from a hat and partnered people up randomly no matter their subscriber count. That way it's fair. And I sent out the request more than a month before Halloween and posted many, many updates and was very clear from the beginning what kind of collab it was going to be. Holly was great. She was partnered with another great artist, an amateur artist, but still a very great artist. They worked together. They came out with a pretty great end product. The actual collab, you know, progress itself was not an issue. The problem was uh, what she was saying in the video itself. It was pretty unprofessional in my opinion. She was very critical of the collab, uh, a little critical of me, kind of insinuating that I, I didn't know what I was doing. She also mentioned she would not be doing any more collabs again. She didn't necessarily say it was because of our collab, but she didn't list any other reasons. It, so it did kind of seem like, oh, this collab sucked, so I'm not doing this again, but she did not explicitly say that. And then she went on to criticize her collab partner, um, not in a constructive way, but more in a uh, regressive kind of way, in a condescending kind of manner. Um, and I found that to be a little bit rude. And then she also did not tag the other artist like we had all agreed upon. That was kind of the end goal, was to, to help smaller YouTubers and to just have some fun. It was not a super serious AdSense guys collab. It was meant for fun for the holidays. She did receive several negative comments uh, on that video, criticizing her for being a little condescending, you know, just overall being unprofessional, which I do agree, she was being unprofessional. Um, and what frustrated me the most was there were many, 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 many chances for her to say, hey, you know what, I just don't think this collab is for me and to bow out. There was even a point in time when we were looking for extra collab partners and that would have been a perfect time. And I just felt that she conducted herself in an unprofessional manner and it could have been done in a different way. She eventually ended up removing the video, which leads me to believe that maybe she herself thought she was a bit harsh in said video. And honestly, I don't have any problems with the criticism she was talking about within her video. I just wish she would have contacted me privately instead of kind of uh, airing her frustrations to the world because then it does kind of put a damper on the collab. Even though it was just for fun, when you do a collab, you want to be really positive about it because there's not just you involved. There are multiple people and they're kind of relying on the other people to do well so we can all benefit from that or all have a good time. And of course, Holly's humor is very dry. It's very blunt, um, very honest and upfront, and that's totally 
fine. Um, I just think it could have been done in just a little bit of a different way. You know, punching up instead of punching down, especially at her collab partners. And of course, this was a couple years ago. She was younger, she was greener, and I honestly think if that would have happened today, I think she would have made a wiser decision with how she chose to talk about the collab. Again, I'm pretty sure that's why she removed the video. It was either because of the onslaught of criticism she was getting, she understood that, she took it to heart, she removed the video, or simply because she just didn't want to hear about it anymore. Which is fine, that's fine too. But that's not what I wanted to mainly talk about today. I just wanted to get that out of the way for transparency's sake. And honestly, what it probably boils down to is Maybe she didn't want to feel like she was letting us down by pulling out, so she decided to persevere and the end product it maybe showed a little bit of frustration. I would not be shocked if that was kind of the answer, which is fine and it's understandable, but I can't speak for Holly, that's just kind of my guess. What I'm here to kind of talk about today is the tracing controversy that I had mentioned at the beginning of this video. I feel like people in the art community came down very hard on Holly simply because because they hear the word trace and that is like sacrilege in the art community. But the reality of it is the situation is a lot more nuanced than that. It is not simply Holly traced another artist's work and passed it off as her own. That's not what happened here. Holly went on to explain in her apology video that she will oftentimes trace reference pictures or sometimes even Photoshop whole real pictures into her artwork to kind of work out the composition of the piece, but that traced image or the actual photoshopped image is never uh, passed as the final product. D'Angelo in his video of her uh, kind of said, well that's all fine and good, except you still posted this work in process without explicitly communicating that you had traced in the image. Which is true, I think there should have been some transparency there, um, but I also think it is an honest mistake. In the research that I did, D'Angelo often calls himself an illustrator, whereas Holly is primarily a comic artist. She has to recreate many scenes multiple times, often very quickly. Though obviously she does do larger pieces, it seems to me that her main kind of gig is being a comic artist, and she has produced several different comics in the past. Therefore, her technique with the tracing and the photoshopping of a real image into her work to work out the composition makes total sense and probably is great like for efficiency's sake. When you make comics, oftentimes you have to map out full background areas to kind of understand where your characters are positioned and where they're going to be going to for proportions and everything. You really need to understand where you are, who's around you, what's around you, what the weather's like. You know, it, there are so many components going into one single panel. She's not just creating one universe inside one painting. She's creating multiple locations inside of a universe inside of her comic that is typically a fraction of the thought process of a lot of comic artists. They have to take into consideration storytelling and character development and mood and palette. It's a lot going on and one must do it quickly. And just a quick aside, I'm not addressing D'Angelo himself. I really like D'Angelo's videos. They're of great quality. He's very funny. He's got great, dry, almost British humor. I, I actually really like his videos. I'm more responding to the general criticism which he seems to also have. I just think his video is a really good video to direct you to in case you're a little confused about the criticisms that are being directed at Holly. So like I said, there is a lot going on when you are a comic artist and it's obviously not to uh, put down other artists like me and you know, traditional artists and people who usually just do singular paintings. It's just two very different thought processes and two very different ways of constructing a universe. So let's take into account some of the psychology behind this. If you asked me to start making comics, I would still be in the mindset of making my singular paintings with one theme and one universe and one mood. It would be kind of difficult for me to change gears. You know, I'd kind of have to uh, get into a groove in order to change gears and to start making comics. So of course the opposite must be true, that she's going to be using some of her comic making techniques in creating singular pieces or smaller comics. Now none of what I said makes it okay to obviously post things that you've traced or directly ripped and claim it as your own, but this is not an evil calculated plan laid in place by Holly to get away with drawing something perfectly accurate to the show by tracing and 
pulling it off as her own. That's, that's not what this is. If you look at the image, it is very clear that it is not part of her artwork in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it kind of looks like it was ripped from an FMA coloring book. It's very obvious she's not trying to hide anything. This really is, in essence, a very, very human error. Uh, you know, the omission of truth, but not with this villainous intent behind it. It's something she does on a regular basis, but obviously only in her personal works, you know, in her sketches, in her rough outlines. And then when the finished product rolls out, that direct rip or trace is gone. Which leads me to her apology, which is defensive, but I feel like a lot of the time in situations like this, an apology has to be a little bit defensive. For the people criticizing her, they are not in her shoes, even if they are other professional artists. They are not doing her day-to-day -day routine. So while to her it is a very clear mistake, which she does own up to and admits that she should have been more clear about what she was doing, to others it's her tracing and trying to get away with it, or her tracing and trying to give a non-apology. Now, of course, the apology could have been worded better, but that's very similar to what happened to us in the past. She could have uh, been a bit more communicative with me about the collab. She could have bowed out respectfully, and we could have put somebody else in her place. These are all pretty much pure communication errors or kind of a facet of Holly's personality. And in my situation with her, I feel it was more of an error, like a communicating error. But in this situation, I think it's more of a reflection of how she communicates. She did own up to what she believed she did wrong, but she also tried to communicate where she was coming from. And even though it did kind of have a defensive air, I think that's just kind of part of Polly's nature. If you watch some of her other videos, she's like that in everything she does. So for the people who are saying her apology isn't sincere, well, wouldn't you just want her to talk from her heart and talk about how she feels? Isn't that the most sincere way she can apologize? Or would you prefer a robotic scripted apology that most really big YouTubers like to roll out? You know, the kind that are still defensive, but in a really, really worse kind of way. Like if she didn't mention anything about being wrong or anything about trying to look out for that in the future or trying to improve herself, that would be one thing. But she does talk about all of those points and how she could do better. I think the defensiveness was kind of aimed at the people who are on a witch hunt and looking for Holly to do wrong because they just don't jive with her edgy, honest, upfront nature. We know probably about 70% of the people who are launching criticisms at her at least understand that it was a mistake, but the rest of them I think they're just trying to tear her down. I noticed on my problem with a big YouTuber video, a lot of people were quick to accuse Holly because she does have a very in-your-face, honest nature. And you know, even I felt that way at first. When we had that experience with each other, I was really put off by her. And at the end of the day, I didn't say anything about it because I came to the conclusion that our personalities just don't jive very well, which is fine. And that's why I eventually was like, okay, this is all understandable. And it probably comes from a place of not wanting to hurt others Others, and then not really knowing how to communicate the frustration you have with having to do something you really didn't want to do. I think her honest upfront nature is 100% why she is successful here on YouTube because her personality does work with a lot of other people's. So my defense of Holly Brown is this. She clearly didn't mean to pass that work off as 100% her own or a 100% finished product. And the people who refuse to believe otherwise, I think they're just assholes and want to see Holly fail because they really don't understand her personality. Don't understand or just don't feel comfortable with it. Which is fine. Some people don't feel comfortable with my personality. It's life. We don't all get along. I think her apology definitely could have been worded better, but I think overall she admits what she was doing wrong and how she's going to change it in the future, and then the rest is kind of aimed at those assholes that are just trying to see her fail. And what I want us all to take away from this is, how would you feel if a bunch of people were out to kind of get you, and a bunch of people who really looked up to you are starting to question you? I'm sure you would feel awful, and you would get pretty defensive too. It's really hard for us to put ourselves in other people's shoes, but in this instance, I think it's very important to do so, because there is a lot of nuance to this particular situation. So before you light your torches and grab your pitchforks and 
try to run Holly Brown out of town, remember that we are all human and we make mistakes. I think the most important part is that Holly clearly highlighted a path and how she could do better and she is dedicated to doing that. I think that's important and we gotta give her credit for that. I know this really isn't the tone of most of my videos. Um, I just got really passionate about this. People have been asking me to comment on this and after watching the Angelo's video, um, I felt like it would be appropriate for me to speak on it. Not because it's necessarily any of my business, but because this is a good example of Holly and I don't really have any relationship outside of the kind of negative experience we had with one another those few years ago. I just wanted to step in and say, hey, even though we have pretty much zero relationship. But I still think it's important that I come to her defense, not because I think she desperately needs defending or that she can't look after herself, but because we're all part of this community together. We need to look past our differences to keep our community strong. Regardless of my personal feelings about Holly, and let me be clear, not negative at all. That first interaction left a bit of a funny taste in my mouth, but after running into a few more of her videos, I started to understand her language a little bit and all was forgiven, even though there really wasn't anything to forgive in the first place. I just think we need to be a little bit kinder to each other. You know what I mean? I've had a few not great experiences in this community and I'd really like to work to change that. So this is my attempt at doing that. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later. Can I just say that I am such a mom. <laughs> I'm like, children, stop fighting. Children. Come, come, nuzzle into my apron. I'll bring you caramels and apple pies from the sill. <laughs> this is my life now. Someone once said that I was the Tana Mojo of our community because, like, I swear a lot. And I was like, no!